Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about CSS pseudo class selectors. CSS pseudo class selectors basically allow us to uh, modify the selectors, the already selectors that we have, the already studied selectors so far. So what do I mean exactly by that? Let's just dive into them. So our uh, HTML is the same as the one that we had in our previous lecture. I'm just going to provide some space for readability purposes. I've increased the content a little bit so the styling can be different. So the structure is a little bit different. And uh, within these uh, pseudo class selectors uh, so, uh, dot CSS, first I'm going to show you the first uh, child. First child, uh, it is pseudo class selector. I'm not going to write it for all of them, I'm just going to copy paste it. So the first child says that I'm going to grab any element that is the first child of its container or its parent. So if I provide it here, uh, let's say we are going to grab the uh, article. So we have the article and you want to grab the paragraph that is the first child within this article. Let's find out which paragraph this actually is. So the syntax for a pseudo class selector is a colon. Then uh, you write the name of that. So it is going to be first child. This is a pseudo class selector, which is going to grab any paragraph that is the first child within the container article, within this container. So first of all, let's take a look at it. So you can see we have one paragraph right here, one paragraph here, and one paragraph here. So is this the first child? No. Why? Because the first child of this article is H1. It's not this paragraph. This is an anchor tag. This is a diff. Now let's take a look at within uh, uh, the paragraph within the, the diff. Is this the first child? Yes, because there is no paragraph within this diff. So as far as the context of this div is concerned, this paragraph is, a, is the first child. And this paragraph is actually the last child, which is another pseudo class selector. So if I say background color, uh, background color gray, I set it to 777, and let's save it. So you can see only hay there has been selected. Why? Again, because it is the first child within the div, uh, within this article. So within this article, we take a look at all the elements and find the paragraph, which is the first element. This paragraph uh, qualifies that description. So this is the first child pseudo um, class selector. We also have the, you guessed it right, the last child pseudo class selector. So which paragraph is the first? Which paragraph is the last? I'm just going to comment this one out. So technically, this has to be selected as well as this one. I mean, this is the first one and this is the last one. So it should be selected technically. So I'm going to say article, article. And you provide the colon and then write last child. There it is. And it is going to select any paragraph element. So this pseudo class selector, it has to be it has to be specified on some sort of already a created CSS selector, valid CSS selector. You can specify it on a an, an element, element selector on a class selector, ID selector, whatever. As long as there is an element select, there is a, some sort of a CSS selector there. It, you cannot just specify it on thin air. Like you say, okay, I want to grab any article that is the last child. No, it is not going to work. You have to join it with that. So I'm going to say, you have to specify the type of element it is that you're looking for, either by its name or by its ID or by its class. So I'm going to say background color, um, let's say 888. Let's save that and there we go. You can see that hey there, hey there has been selected again. Why? Because this is the first and the last element. That is why it has been selected. So save that. There we go. We have some padding there as well. Let me comment that one out. The other, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, pseudo class selectors. I'm not going to cover all of them but I will cover the most important one. 
The next one is going to be the nth child uh, pseudoclass selector. The nth child, basically, in this one, you have more flexibility. You specify the type of the element. So I'm going to say within the article, I want to grab any paragraph that, let's say, is the second child. So you're going to say nth child, and then you're going to pass in two. So this is going to select any paragraph element that is the second child within its container. So let's go ahead and let's check out the HTML. So within the HTML, do we have any paragraph that is the second child of its container? So first of all, let's find all the paragraphs. This is the first one. This is the second one. And this is the third one. So let's start from the top. Is this paragraph the second child for uh, within its parent's container? Yes, because this is the first one and this is the second one. Um, is this paragraph the second child within its parent's container? Now you have to keep in mind, whenever you're talking about this paragraph, the article is not its parent. Div is its parent. Article is its grandparent, even though we don't have any such thing as a grandparent in CSS. Uh, I'm just saying it just to make sense, just to make it more sensical for you. And um, so this paragraph is contained to the uh, context of this div. And uh, this div is its parent, and th there is only one child, and that is the paragraph, so it is not a second child. And this one, has the parent uh, as this article and this parent uh, uh, this paragraph is the last child so it is not the second one two three four five six that is the sixth child so whenever whenever i say nth child two we should only be selecting this paragraph that i've highlighted i'm going to say background color light salmon padding uh, 25 pixels, color white. Let's just save that and there we go. Because this is the only second child that we have in there. So this is the nth child. If you just change it to number six, it is going to grab this paragraph. So this is like a little bit more flexible than the other ones. You can select whichever child it is. Now, next up, I'm going to talk about three more different types of pseudoclass selectors. Uh, those are sort of like these ones, but with, there is only one very small difference. And the difference is contained to the type of the element. So now you can see here th that this is exactly the reason that I told you that this markup is uh, created in this way that we need to be able to exercise these selectors. So whenever i talked about the first child right i told you that this paragraph this paragraph that i've highlighted this is not the first child of this its container the title polar bears it is the first child but this is the second child even though this title and this paragraph they have two different types they are of two different kinds so they are different elements. They're not same elements. This is an H1. This is a P, par a P element. So in their nature, they're completely different. So what the other pseudoclass selector is going to do for us is going to take this selection step, selection criteria one step further, one step, uh, take it to the next level. <laughs> so whenever you say, uh, pseudo the last of type or first of type pseudo class selector it is not going to consider elements which are not of its type what do i mean by that so whenever i grab this one i put it here i'm going to say first of type so what does that mean it means i'm looking the, f the for the paragraph which is the first elements in its own category, in its own type, in its own kind. Which one that is? Which one is it? It is this paragraph. Even though there is an H1 there, but is H1 the same as paragraph? No, they're different. Their types are different. It's exactly like Python, Python data types. You have strings, then you have um, integers. Integers have a different data type. 
strings have a different data, data type. That is the same thing with this. H1 has a different data type. Paragraph has a different data type. So whenever you say first of type, it is just going to take a look at the same category. As long as it is the same, then that is okay. Otherwise, it's not okay. So if I grab that, if I put that here and uncomment it, and the uh, pseudo class is first of type. And when you save it, it is going to select the first paragraph, which is this one. I could provide it with these styling just to make it more obvious. Save that, and there we go. It did select this one. I didn't talk about that, but it got it. Uh, the reason that it selected it, because this paragraph is within this diff. And uh, within this diff, we just have one paragraph, which is the first of its kind. It's like the opposite of uh, Superman or Guko. They are the last of their kinds. And this is the first of their kind. We are going to get to that selector. We do have a selector for Superman as well. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that made more sense than the, the everything that I was just talking about. So I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to put it down here. Second of, uh, no, not second, last of type. So the last of type means something that is the last of its kind. We don't care about anything else. So if I were to grab this anchor element, oops, that was a mistake. I just cut it and cl just collapse that. No, yeah, collapse it. Come on, buddy. Just copy that, put it right here. And if I put like something else in here, like let's say you have a button. Click me. Just save everything, and there we go. I'm going to provide a couple of line breaks. So page break, page break. There we go. So if you say the paragraph, which is the last of its kind within the article, which paragraph is that? We know that it is going to be this paragraph because this is the first and the last. But is this paragraph being qualified? Yes. Why? Because even though it is not the last item, the last element, but it is the last of the last element in the category of paragraphs because after it we don't have any other paragraph so save that and i'm just going to grab this just make sure that all the styling stick so we should technically be selecting this paragraph and hey there so uncomment this instead of first you're just going to write last of type save that there we go this is actually a very cool selector I've used it a lot in my projects course, which is Flexbox, Grid, and SAS course. I've used it like a lot. And because I really like this, this selector, it is very, very cool and very unique. Now, and if in case you're wondering, we do have an nth child class selector, pseudo class selector for type as well. So I could just grab that and I could paste it right here. And it is going to be nth of type. So uh, we are going to count the children, but the uh, the children or the elements they they are they are going to have a specific type. Now I should have clarified this before, but you might be thinking, okay, how do I know what type it is that I'm looking for? Well, what is the element that you are actually looking for? In this case, I'm looking for a paragraph. So if you pass in a paragraph here. It means that the paragraph is the type that is going to decide whether any other uh, type is going to get qualified or not. So this element that you pass in here is going to be kind of the referee. It's going to decide which one qualifies, which one doesn't qualify as the type selector, as the type pseudo class selector. This is going to d decide uh, which one is going to be uh, um, selected or not. So let's take a look at that in action. I'm going to say nth dash of dash type. That is the actual name of it. So I'm going to pass in, give me any paragraph that within its own category, it is the second of type. And I would like you to uh, pause the video and think about it. So what do you think which one it is? It is going to be this paragraph. Why? Because in the category of paragraphs, we have only one and we have two. 
and we have one in here which which belongs to this div so this is the first uh, first of type this is the second of type so we should be able to select this element Let's save that and there we go it has been selected now in case you're wondering that if an element has like a class how can i add that there how can i add the pseudo class tenth of type to an element that has a class well in that case it is well actually it doesn't make sense if you add if you try to add a pseudo class selector to a class selector it's usually added to an element selector because if you have a class then selected by that class why do you need to add the pseudo class it's like uh, like uh, like extra work that you want to do like overdoing something but in case you're wondering about it for some reason let's say you have a paragraph in here you have a paragraph that has a class of let's say para and then you have another paragraph that has the same class so let's say you are making like a blog website right it it is uh possible uh i wouldn't say it's like it doesn't make sense i take back what i said and i apologize for that it is possible that that might happen but it is very rare and it's not usually something that you're going to see a lot because whenever you have a class you're basically going to select it by that class when you have a class of para well just select it by that don't do the extra stuff so i'm just going to comment that one out um uh, let's um copy that put it right here and comment it so you might say okay i have a paragraph that has a class of para and i want to select the second child within this class of para and this class of para depends or belongs to a paragraph so the criteria or the referee that is going to qualify elements is going to be a paragraph element so in this case if you save it you're going to again get that element but now this syntax this is not a good syntax it doesn't look good it looks amateurish it's not professional because if you have a para and you want to grab the second it's let's say you have um uh 10 paragraphs in a blog website all of them with the same styling but for some reason you want to grab the fifth one or the second one and provide it with like two different styles how can you do that now instead of going this way i'm going to show you another way in that case what you're going to do is you're going to add another class so you can add more than one class it is not a best practice to do this with ids but it is a best practice to do it with classes so you're going to say main para for example so now this paragraph has two classes one is para and the other one is main para the way that para, uh, classes work is you separate them with a space then it means that this particular paragraph has two classes so now if you if i save that and if i come here you just say main para oops habit of python you're just going to say main para and uh, let's grab all the styling from there put it right here and save it there you go so this is a better syntax than this one this is shorter to the point and this actually targets the element that you're trying to style as opposed to providing a class here so this is actually the best practice way of doing it this is preferred over this one whenever you're using the last of type the first of type nth of type last child first child um nth child it is recommended to do that with the element name don't do that with ids or with classes it doesn't mean you can't you can't you can very well do it but it's not a good practice keep that in mind so with this our lecture comes to an end see you in the next one